Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to start covering um, electrochemistry. Um, so without further ado, uh, the very first thing that we want to talk about is the fact that an electrochemical reaction is just a reaction where electrons get transferred from one thing to another. Okay, so um, we've talked about redox reactions before, and this electrochemistry chapter is going to focus specifically on reduction oxidation reactions. And in order to do that, we have to kind of recall how to assign oxidation numbers. Again, something we've seen before, um, whether this class or honors chemistry, but the first step in any of our redox uh, electrochemical equations or anything that we're going to do in this first half of the chapter is going to be to assign an oxidation number. So that just means we have to assign a charge. And so here we see an example of oxidation numbers that have already been assigned. Anything that is a solid species is going to have a zero oxidation number if it's elemental so in other words if the zinc is by itself and it's solid the zinc itself has a zero charge and we're going to go over the rules for all of the assigning of oxidation numbers but a lot here the oxidation numbers match the charges on the species in this particular um, example okay um, so that being said a uh, real quick re reminder of oxidation reduction reactions. We say something is oxidized when it loses electrons. And so you'll remember that little mnemonic that I that I taught you guys way back when, oil rig, where oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. And so when we say that an object or a species is oxidized what we're saying is it's lost electrons to become more positive so in this example the zinc is the thing that is going to be the oxidized thing because it's it's lost two electrons now on the other side um we're going to look at the reduction of the hydrogen species so we know it was reduced because it went from a positive number to a less positive number in other words it gained electrons to become less positive so remember oil rig oxidation is lost reduction is gain and when we say loss and gain we are talking only about electrons um, and then one more uh, definition, if we say that something is reduced, so for instance, H plus is the thing that's reduced, then we can call it the oxidizing agent because what it does is it oxidizes the zinc solid on the left side of the reaction. We can say the opposite for the oxidized thing. So the zinc is, which gets oxidized, is the reducing agent. So if the thing is oxidized, it is the reducing agent. If the thing is reduced, it is the oxidizing agent because it performs the opposite process on the thing it's in or on the thing it's reacting with, if you will. Um, so then we're going to just go through the rules again. Um, there's a few steps. A lot of what's happening in this chapter in the first half is going to be stepwise. So you'll want to write down your steps. Um, and so for the first set of instructions, we have to be able to identify and assign oxidation numbers. So what that means is we want to go through and we want to have a set of rules that helps us identify the charge on different species. And the very first rule is that one that we just talked about was zinc. If it's an element in their elemental form, so it's by itself, they have an oxidation number of zero. That's the first rule. The next rule says the oxidation number of a monatomic ion is the same as, as its charge. So for instance, that H plus. H plus has an oxidation number of plus one because it's charged plus one. And that's a monatomic ion. So meaning one atom that is charged. Okay. Um, the next ones that we're going to go through are ones that are kind of more common. One is that oxidation has an oxidation number of negative two, except for one instance called the peroxide ion where it has an oxidation number of negative one this is a finite rule right so oxygen can never be negative three oxygen can never be zero um and th so on and so forth when it's when it's with another ion so in this we're talking about what happens when we make compounds or when we find them by themselves as ions right oxygen gas o2 gas is going to have a zero charge because that would be its elemental form and that's rule one okay so just make sure that you're writing these down and you're practicing um hydrogen is going to be a plus one or a minus one Again, this is all stuff you've learned before. This is just the actual name for how we learned common charges when we were in our honors chemistry class, okay? Um, 
Non-metals themselves tend to be negative. Metals tend to be positive. That's a big, that's a big one there. Um, a lot of times we have to use the charge on a non-metal like fluorine or oxygen to figure out what the charge on the metal is um, based on the composition of a compound. Um, so fluorine itself is always going to have a negative one charge, no exceptions. It does not have anything other um, because it's the most electronegative and oxidation numbers are partially based on electronegativity. Um, other halogens have a typical negative one charge unless they are positive in our polyatomic ions. So this term oxyanion really just means uh, polyatomic ion. So um, when it comes down to it, just remember that you're using what's around it to identify the charges in everything involved. Um, that being said, um, our next rule is that the sum of all of them added together in a neutral compound, so think like CO2, you add all of the oxidation numbers together on the C and the two O's, you should get a zero charge on that compound because carbon dioxide has no charge the way that it's written. Now, if this, if the uh, thing is an ion of some kind, then the sum of the oxidation numbers has to be the charge on the ion. So for instance, PO4 three minus is the phosphate ion. There are four oxygens and one phosphorus. When you add up all of the charges of that phosphorus and those four oxygens, the total charge when they add it, when they're all added together has to equal that negative three charge on the ion. Okay, and so those are the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. From there, we move into balancing oxidation reduction equations. So we're going to use what we call the, it, the half reduction method. And the way that we're going to learn how to balance these is in an acidic solution. So don't worry too much about like the way that that is described. For now, we're just going to assume that we have the acidic solution version of the half re reaction method. And just like we went through with the assigning oxidation numbers, we have a series of steps that we have to go through in order to do this particular method. This method's going to involve treating each of the parts of the reaction, so the reduction and the oxidation, separately. So we're going to split them up, and then we're going to balance each, then we're going to bring them back together and see what we can cancel on both sides. That's the whole idea behind balancing a redox reaction. Balancing a redox reaction is not like adding coefficients and hoping or in trying to just balance out the atoms. It won't work if you try to do that. So a lot of times we have to actually add stuff to our equations in order to balance them. And you'll see that there are two things really that we can add. One is the hydrogen atom, so H+, plus, and the other is the H2O. So we can use H2O as a balancing um, measure as well. So here we go with our steps. Now step one is to assign oxidation numbers to determine what gets oxidized and what gets reduced. So we need to go through our equation, whatever equation we start with, and we have to assign the oxidation numbers for everything. And you have a separate set of steps to do that. The second thing that you're going to do is you're going to write the two reactions separately. So you're going to know what their charges are and then you're going to separate them. You're going to put the thing that gets oxidized with its ox with the its partner on the other side and you're going to put the thing that gets reduced with its partner on the other side of the equation as well. And we'll go through an example here in a second. For now, get these steps written down. Step three is going to be to balance each half reaction, and there's an individual set of instructions to do this. So in order to balance each half reaction, we're going to balance elements that are not hydrogen and oxygen first. So for instance, if we had manganese or if we had zinc, we'd balance the zinc atoms, number of atoms on both sides of the equation before we moved on to the oxygen and the hydrogen. The second part of this is going to be to balance the oxygens on both sides of your equation by adding water to whichever side needs it. The next thing is going to be to balance the hydrogen. Since you added water, you also added hydrogens to one side. You have to add H plus to the other side in order to balance it out. And the last thing is going to be to balance the charge on both sides. So the sum of the charges on both sides has to equal. So for instance, if you have a two plus total charge on your reactant side, you have to have a two plus total charge on your product side. And you do this by adding a negatively charged electron or as many as you need. You're going to do this for each half reaction. So you're going to do it once for the reduction, you're going to do it once for the oxidation, and then we're going to multiply, so this is step four, we're going to multiply each of the half reactions by integers because our goal here before we add them all together is to have the same number of electrons in each reaction. So for instance, if you had to add three electrons in the previous step to one of your ox to your oxidation reaction, for instance, and then you had to add six electrons to your reduction half reaction. Well, you want the six and the three to be the same. 
So you would multiply that first reaction by two in order to get those three electrons to now be six electrons. Again, we're going to walk through an example, but get these written down. You're going to want these handy for any practice problems we do in this section. The next thing is going to be to add the half reactions together. Put all the reactants on one side of a new equation and all the products on the other side of that equation. And make sure in this step that you also then remove things that are present on both sides. So again, if one side has six electrons and the other side has six electrons, those equal, you can balance them out so you can cross them out. Okay. Um, and same thing goes for like if you have waters on both sides or if you have hydrogen H pluses on both sides and um, maybe carbon dioxide, whatever you might have on both sides has to get crossed off. The last thing to do is just to make sure the equation is balanced according to mass. So do you have six oxygens on both sides? The normal way to go through and see if an, a reaction is balanced. The last step is to make sure the equation is balanced according to charge. If you've done everything right up to step seven, this step, you're just double checking everything should balance out uh, charge-wise completely, right? So what we mean by balancing by charge is that one side of the reaction has to have, one has to have the same charge as the other side of the half, as the other side of the whole reaction, right? So if negative two on the left side, negative two on the right side. All right, so let's walk through an example. <coughs> All right, so here we go. This is going to be the reaction of uh, permanganate, or I'm sorry, manganate and oxalate. And so you'll see here that this is the general redox reaction. It is not balanced. How do we know it's not balanced? If you look at those oxygens, those are not equal on both sides, right? If you look at those carbons, not equal on both sides. So our goal is going to be to balance this overall redox reaction that we have been presented. And in order to do that, we're going to use that method we just discussed. Okay. So first step was to assign oxidation numbers. So we've gone through and we've given every individual thing an oxidation number. You'll notice they don't tell you what oxygen is because oxygen is always a negative two unless it's present in peroxide. And remember that peroxide is H2O2 uh, or O2 two minus basically. So in this case, we know the oxygens are negative twos and we know that since it's a negative two on the left side, it's also a negative two on the right side. So that doesn't change charge. With redox reactions, we're looking for something that changes charge from the left side to the right side. And in this case, the manganese ion MN had a plus seven over here based on the oxygens that are present and the overall charge. And the oxalate, the carbon, had a plus three charge based on the O4s and the overall two minus charge. And on the right side, manganese is two plus, you were just told that, and carbon is four plus because it has two oxygens, each negative two attached to it. So now we wanna see which is reduced and which is oxidized. And obviously, according to what we've been told, the plus seven um, becomes less positive. So that means it's gonna gain, I'm sorry, lose an electron. Um, yeah, it's going to gain electrons um, and it's going to become a positive two. So plus seven to plus two is going to be a gain of electrons to become less positive. And then plus three to plus four means it's going to give electron an electron away and become more positive. So our manganese is going to be our reduction and our carbon is going to be our oxidation. So, so our next step, now that we know the oxidation numbers and what gets oxidized and reduced, is to split the two, this reaction into two. So we're going to split it into, first, the oxidation half reaction. So we're just going to take the carbon on both sides of the equation, right? So we took the carbon here that gets oxidized and we just created an, a half reaction. Then we're gonna go through and we're just gonna show you how to balance that oxidation half reaction. So in order to balance this, the first thing that we can do is we can balance the carbons. Remember our first, our, our next step after we know the, ox, the assigning of the oxidation numbers is to go through step three. And step three says the first thing we do is we balance the atoms that are not oxygen or hydrogen. So in this case, we're gonna balance the carbon. We're gonna put a two in front of the CO2 and that'll balance the carbon. 
Okay, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to balance the oxygens, right? So our next step is to balance oxygen by adding water. Well, our oxygens are already balanced, so we don't have to do that in this particular half reaction. So we're going to skip down to our next one, which is to balance charges by adding electrons. So the left side of this reaction has a negative two charge. The right side of this reaction also has to have a negative two charge. So so once we have the negative two on both sides, um, then we're gonna move on to the reduction half reaction and get that balanced. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so now we have the leftovers. So we have the manganese to the manganese. Um, the first thing we wanna do is balance the manganese. So since there's one on one side and one on the other, we know the manganese atom itself is already balanced. Next thing we wanna balance is the oxygens. And in order to do that, we have to add water. The only way to add oxygen to either side is to add the water molecule. So on the right side of this equation, we're gonna add four of the H2O molecules and that'll balance out the oxygens. But next we have to balance the hydrogens because we added those hydrogens. So we're going to add H plus to the left side to balance those hydrogens. From there, the last thing we have to balance is the charges on both sides. So for instance, on the left side, we have eight plus and two plus, but we also have this one minus. So total on the left side is a seven plus charge. Total on the right side is a two plus charge. In order to get the left side to have a two plus charge, we had to add five electrons, right? Because seven minus five is positive two. So that leaves this left side as a positive two total. And that leaves the right side as a positive two total. So now we've balanced this half reaction. So now what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna combine our half reactions. But before we do that, remember, our next step says to um, sorry, our next step says to multiply in order to get the electrons to be the same number in both equations. So we can multiply the whole reaction by any integer. So I'm going to open the window for my cat. Um, we can multiply each of the reactions by an integer to get the electrons to be the same. So in this case, if we wanted this number to be the same as this number, there's no number, there's no whole number integer we can multiply two by to get to five. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply two by five and five by two to get them both to have um, 10 electrons. And in doing so, we're gonna, since we're multiplying two times five, we have to multiply this times five and this times five. So this reaction is going to become five C2O4 makes 10 CO2 plus 10 electrons. And this reaction, we're going to multiply everything by two. That's my cat. Um, and we're going to get 10 electrons plus 16 hydrogens um, makes, um, and two manganate ions is going to make uh, two manganate on the, on the right side and eight hydrogen, I'm sorry, eight waters on the right side. And that's what we're going to end up with in those two reactions. Okay, so next thing. So now we have same numbers of electrons in each equation. So what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to subtract or we're going to get rid of the things that are present on both sides. And in the case of these reactions, once we add them all together, we get this on the left and this on the right. We're gonna get rid of the electrons on both sides because there's the same number of electrons on both sides based on the step that we just completed. So we're gonna cross off those 10 electrons and we're gonna be left with this particular reaction, which is of course the balanced reaction. Last thing we should be doing is double checking charges and double checking numbers of atoms on both sides. So do we have, we've got 16 H plus and two minus, so 16 minus two is 14 and five times negative two is 10. So we're gonna do 16 minus 10 minus two, which leaves us with a four plus charge on the left. Over here, we have two times two, which is four plus charge on the right. So this is going to be a balanced equation that has the right number of atoms on both sides and the right charges, total charges added together on both sides as well. Um, last thing to talk about in this particular video is just what happens if we move from a, a wa an acid solution to a base solution. And we'll go through an example of balancing in an acid and balancing in a base in our practice problems video. But just a few things kind of change. Um, instead of adding um, H plus or instead of instead of like yeah so instead of kind of changing the way we do things we also have to add a step where we then add oh minus to each side in order to neutralize the h plus because when you do h plus and oh minus you get water so we'll add a step in our balancing in a basic solution 
All right, so I'm gonna pause this there. Um, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna wrap this video up, and then our next video will be the next part of our lecture. We still have a little bit to go for sections one through five. See you in a bit.